all right let's rank some certifications for salesforce developers and especially i'm gonna rank for the entry jobs for the entry role let's say you're admin architect anyone just breaking into the system into the salesforce ecosystem and you want to get your first job we have so many certifications and some of them are good some of them are awesome for getting first job uh, or maybe for the first couple of years working as a developer. So let's rank them. Let's just comment out those people who already have five years of experience. Let's rank those who are just starting out. The first one is administrator. So the administrator cert is actually quite good for Salesforce developers because it shows that you have really good understanding of a Salesforce platform in general, not only the code. But I would probably downgrade it here to the OK. So S and a b c d d is the lowest rank s is the the biggest one i would downgrade it to the okay because the next one is advanced admin and advanced admin is definitely much better than just just having an admin cert then ai associate i would put on why not because why wouldn't you take the certification because it's uh, something that you can take basically from zero to being good at it in like let's say day two maybe the same goes for associate, like why not, why not? Application architect. So everything that is architect related, I would not recommend you for the first job because it is way above your ability if you don't have any working experience. So if we speak about just getting your first job, that's like, why would you do that? But if you already have a little quite like, let's say a few years of experience, then having an application architect is okay certification. It's not something that you should be should have as a super super goal because it's not mainly what you do. So your application architect is something like architect for admins. Usually it's not your domain. Then we have B2B solution architect, B2B, everything that is B2B, B2C. It is very, very specific. So you should take those certifications if you want to make this B2B and B2C stuff your main application area, like your main uh, knowledge domain. And the thing is that B2B and B2C, they're quite different. <laughs> you can be a developer with B2B commerce cloud, for example, and not be super deep into the uh, into Salesforce. So it's possible. But don't take those things unless you want to specialize in these products, which is not good for your first job. So if you want to get the first job, don't, don't do that. Business analyst. Business analyst is actually quite a good certification you know thinking about this i would probably downgrade the application architect to why not to the c because i feel like application architect yeah okay because only because it is an architect certification i'm gonna put it into the b cpq specialist now the cpq specialist goes into here unless you want to specialize in cpq which now is a such a high in demand skill like look at the all um all the job descriptions out there for salesforce cpq is like in 50 percent of them but i would also say that cpq stuff it's more like for admins so it's kind of useful but you shouldn't focus on that as a beginner you should focus on the development stuff data cloud consultant um goes into why as well because first it is specific second it is much more architect level of certification data cloud most likely you won't be having anything to do with the data cloud unless you have already three, four, five years of experience. Because those data cloud projects, they are for big companies, they are for big complex projects. I would not recommend you doing anything with the data cloud related. Education cloud and experience cloud goes here in the why. Like why would you do them? For exactly the same reason. They are super, super specialized. Don't do them unless you want to go in those products. So if, you, if your goal is to work as a Salesforce developer, don't do the certifications. Focus on the Salesforce development. Now, field service consultant, the same thing. I don't even know what, what it means. Heroku architect, architect stuff, goes into something that you shouldn't be doing. Industry CPQ developer. Now, this is more interesting because this is already much more developer certification. So if you want to specialize in CPQ, which is really high in demand skill currently as 2024 now beginning of 2024 you can kind of do them if you really want gonna increase your mar marked value javascript developer the javascript developer is awesome this is 
god tier. So first, not that many people have it. Second, it's a lot of transferable skills that you have. If you know JavaScript, it means you can also develop in just in JavaScript in other programming languages. So JavaScript is awesome. JavaScript is something that you're going to need as a developer to be, to be working all the time with. So really good certification. Also, keep in mind, it's hard certification. It's, it's not an easy certification at all. It's a hard one. Marketing cloud and engagement. I think that's what was part of something. Marketing cloud, marketing cloud, marketing cloud, marketing cloud. Unless you want to go and specialize in marketing cloud, you shouldn't do that. And I don't advise you to go and specialize in the marketing cloud. You will only reduce your chances for getting hired for the first position. I don't recommend that. Marketing cloud developer, again, so if you really want to go and specialize in the marketing cloud, you can go for the developer cert. The same goes for marketing cloud specialist. You can guess nonprofit cloud, Omni Studio, and Omni Studio developer goes for the same thing. But now the difference with the Omni Studio developer, why I don't put it here in the C? It's because Omni Studio is like, how many jobs is there for Omni Studio? Not that many. Much more for Marketing Cloud. Like Marketing Cloud jobs, there are actually quite a lot, quite a bit. Uh, for Omni Studio, not that many at all. I don't recommend to this stuff at all. Even if you want to go into Omni Studio, maybe, I know, maybe the better way for you would be to find just a Salesforce developer job. And not profit, I skipped it for this for exactly the same reason because uh, it's uh, it's very specialized. Now, platform app builder, platform app builder is a really good certification for developer, and I would put it into the awesome, especially because it's kind of like an advanced administrator. So it goes in a lot of different admin deep stuff. It's not really about development. It's nothing about code. It's more about choosing when what tool to choose like here's your scenario choose do you need to do code for that or do you need to do flows for that what was this the universal containers company want to implement something really 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 cool uh, you're a developer and how, how would you advise to implement this thing on the salesforce and you're like code and they're like no that's not right because you can implement it with the flow that's that's what app builder is about really good certification uh, because it shows you that you are well-rounded developer, not only just, just code, 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 which is something that, uh, that people should kind of also put emphasis on. Because sometimes when you see that uh, you're applying for, for development, then uh, kind of people perceive that you're a developer, it means you're not doing the, the admin part or you're not doing the consulting part. So having these certifications is a good sign. Platform developer one, really good certification. I would say it's the only one required certification out of all of them like platform developer one is something that you have to get in order to get the first job it's absolutely required admin not required a builder not required javascript definitely not but platform developer one absolutely absolutely you need to do that platform developer two is the next one and i'm gonna put it here into god tier <clears throat> platform developer two and I have platform developer too. It opens up a lot of doors. This is something that when people see it on your resume, they kind of see that you're technically good. You know how to solve technical problems. Dev2, if you can get it, get it. You will not learn a lot of cool stuff. Almost every single person I spoke to said that Dev2 was not worth it. But every single person I spoke to said that Dev2 certification was worth it in terms of employability, in terms of showing your skills on the market. This is the, the main reason for Dev2 certification. The next one, Sales Cloud Consultant. This is an okay certification to take for a developer because it goes deeper into the Sales Cloud and most likely you will need to do some kind of Sales Cloud consulting stuff on your project because you, you will not be just coding. Most likely, especially if you work in consulting as I did for the last four years, you would, be, uh, you would be working with other businesses. So that's a good certification to do. Sales representative. I heard that it's really easy. I didn't take it. Uh, so if you, if you want to do that, do that. But don't put too much emphasis on that. Service cloud consultant. I don't recommend doing this certification because it goes deep. But it, it goes into the service cloud. If you have some service cloud projects, maybe you could do them. But uh, I don't know. You, you should rather do some developer uh, certification strategy designer it goes here for the reason because it is not really developer certification in the first couple of years 
it is a good one, but not for the first years. User experience designer is already a little bit better because this is something that you will be working much more. So you will be working with the user experience a lot. So that's much more useful. WCRM goes here because it's again very specialized. So as you see, just the main idea, don't take very specialized certs. Start with those that are more common. Start with a Dev1 Dev certification and then go into the whatever field you like because you can't know which field of, out of all these clouds you're going to choose unless you work with some of them. Now we have System Architect. As soon as you have System Architect, it's, it shows you that you're not only a developer that can write code, you're also a developer that can architect systems. So that's a good one. And the Technical Architect, of course, that's a god tier. I think few certifications are missing actually from this one like sharing and visibility. So those from the pyramid scheme of uh, Salesforce architecture, but they would all go into the, okay, I would say, yeah, I would even put technical architect above, <laughs> above into like double gold or super gold, <laughs> because if you can do the technical architect, of course, that's not something that like the technical architect impossible to do with a couple of years of experience. So I don't even think that the certification should be on the scheme. And all the other uh, architecture certs that are not included here, they should not be your main priority. If you want to start with the Salesforce development, go for the platform developer one, and then any out of this awesome tier. You would need to do something from OK, like for example, for advanced admin, you're going to need to have admin. And then do some from B or C tier, something that are quick wins, like for example, AI associate or just associate. Those two, you can pass in a couple of days, then platform developer one, admin and advanced admin and here we go you have five certs and five certs more than enough to get hired for your first self for your, for your first developer job just pay attention that on top of this certs you also have something to show you also have real skills to show that's important thank you and see you in the next one